Welcome to the Museum für Naturkunde Berlin. As a research museum, we have a huge exhibition and even larger collection, and my colleagues and I are going to take you on a journey through it. Let's go! Over here we have the skull of the Brachiosaurus bronchi, which is the tallest dinosaur in this room. And right next to it, we have a plaque of the Guinness Book of World Records, claiming it's not only this, but also the tallest mounted skeleton of any dinosaur in the whole world. Because with this whopping 13.27 meters, it's about as tall as a four-story building. And this one was only 20 years old when it died, so barely a teenager. And uh, maybe its parents were even taller because these ones were able to grow up to maybe 70 years old and they actually never stopped growing. Now a question that you might have is, are these actually real fossils? And the answer is of course, because you don't get a world record for a fake dinosaur. But how can you tell when you are in a museum the next time? Well, there's a trick. If you see a supporting structure from the outside, like here, with these metal fingers wrapping around the fossils, you can actually be quite sure that this is a real dinosaur because this is custom made and thus very, very expensive for the museum. With a fake dinosaur, you would just drill into it because it's not worth as much. But with this one, you wouldn't do this because this is 70% real. Now, what do you need if you want to dig up dinosaurs? Amazingly, the MFN got most of its dinosaurs from just one excavation about 100 years ago in Tanzania. Back then, it wasn't called Tanzania though, but German East Africa. And the workers used something as crude as a pickaxe or something as delicate as a brush. And with makeshift baskets, they moved about 250 tons of material to shore, where they shipped it to Berlin. Here we have the original fossil of the Archaeopteryx, which literally means ancient wing. Because it was a winged dinosaur, it had wings. You can see one on the left and one on the right. This actually died 150 million years ago in the Jurassic period, making this a Jurassic Park dinosaur. What makes this so special is, I kind of think it knew what was about to come because it died just not covering anything of itself. As you can see, there's part of the tail on the left then at the lower end you can see the left leg, next to it part of the pelvic bone and then the right leg next to this, so spread out beautifully for us to examine it here at the museum. The guy who originally found this back in 1877 swapped this in South Germany for a cow and some bread, which is probably worth 180 Deutschmarks, not so much. Our reinsurance company puts a price tag on this, we don't, but they do, and they value this at about 20 million euros, making this the priciest thing that we have here. Now it is behind bulletproof glass, and it only survived the Second World War, where the museum has been hit by an aerial bomb that destroyed a quarter of the museum and also a quarter of our collection, because it, beforehand it has been brought into a vault of a nearby bank, making it very safe. Over here we have Bobby. Bobby is not just some gorilla, he's actually the gorilla. He's the mascot of the Berlin Zoo because he was the first gorilla to come to Berlin. That was in 1928 already, but being the first gorilla also has the bad sides because people up until then didn't have anything to compare him to, so actually they treated him like a human. So they brought him in from France via uh, people person's car in the train. So he actually sat on a seat and not in a cage. And that kept going, actually. When they had him in the zoo, they fed him a human diet. So basically, they fed him bratwurst, cabbage roulade, and the such. Not the best diet for a gorilla like this. Unfortunately, he only survived seven years in the zoo and died already in 1935. But not only Bobby is here. We also have a VIP, the very important polar bear. This is Knut. And Knut was born in 2006, along with his twin brother in the zoo in Berlin, and then Actually, his whole story is kind of tragic because his mother didn't want to have anything to do with the two and his twin brother actually died due to neglect. People then came in and fed him via bottle and uh, this was good for Knut because then he was able to grow up to maybe 305 kilograms, which is a nice weight for a young polar bear like Knut. But unfortunately, in 2011, he died due to an autoimmune disease called anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis which means uh, every help for Knut came too late. But uh, due to Knut's sacrifice, nowadays no polar bear has to die because of this disease, because we know what to do with it when it strikes.